Okay, we have our very basic tests here for our profiler. I want to run them, and I want to make sure that we can pass. We should get data that looks roughly like this. Also, you noticed uh, I changed the name of the test to something a little more meaningful than the ASDF thing that I had here before. So let's go over to the profiler, and we need to make all of these all of these functions work. It would probably make sense to get the initialize function to work correctly, and then the shutdown, and so on and so forth. Um, you'll notice that I'm returning void here. Usually I return a boolean or some sort of error code, possible error code from initialize and shutdown. Um, but I'm returning void here for reasons that you'll see later. It's because I want the profiler. The profiler is the debugging piece that I don't always want to be around. Obviously, doing the profiling is going to take up some time in our frames, and I don't want to waste that time when we actually push this thing out, so to say. It's make a release build. So I want this all this code that we write, it will disappear on release, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, in some later videos. But, so, but in order to make that happen, I have to return void here. Also, a little note, when I do return a boolean here, it kind of tears me up inside because I'm used to exceptions in the .NET uh, C Sharp language, or even Java, or even C++ has them. But in game, we turn off exceptions, one, because there's a lot of runtime cost and overhead. So, so be it. Uh, I, I don't think return codes are very clean. Exceptions are definitely much more a much more cleaner way of reporting errors, but unfortunately, because of their overhead, we do not want to pay the cost. We want the game to run fast and well. I'm going to actually move these up here just because I think it makes more sense to have kind of our initialize at the top, and then I like to pair shutdown directly below it. And I'm also going to do the same in the .h file just for consistency because I'm picky that way. And in the shutdown, we're going to write the file out. In the initializer, there's really not much work to do. I definitely do not want to open the file here and keep a handle open uh, to the file. A handle is a Windows uh, resource or operating system level resource. I, I don't want to open the file until I'm ready to write it. And so we'll, we'll do all that in the shutdown. So for now, in the initializer, I just want to save away this file name, which we're going to have to do uh, with a private data member. So file name like that and we'll go here this file name until I sense hasn't caught up with this yet file name gets file name and then in the shutdown I'll come back to the shutdown later I like to write these somewhat in the order that they will be uh, called uh, first of all new frame will be called before add entry so I'm actually going to put that up there Get rid of this. I don't know. I'm, be, I'm being, <laughs> I'm just being too picky. They're removing all that white space. Let me uh, move new frame up here. Sorry if my voice is rattling a little bit. I coach soccer and I'm a little bit too extreme uh, when my soccer team's playing, but they win a lot of games. Okay. Uh, okay. So when when somebody calls this function add entry and and somebody will be us. All right, but right now I'm popping into the mode of say I'm working with a team of developers and they're going to call this add entry function. Uh, what are we going to do with this data? How are we going to store the data that they give us so that eventually we can write it out like so? Okay, pause the video and think about how would you store that? How would you do that? What makes the most sense to you? Now, if you're somewhat experienced but not extremely experienced with games like I was uh, a few years back, you probably think of a dictionary. I mean, this looks very much like a dictionary. We have a, a key here, and then we have multiple values that go with that key, so on and so forth. Um, and that's a very reasonable way of, do of doing it. Uh, some downsides with the dictionaries is the dynamic allocation overhead. I was raised by, in game programming, I was raised by programmers that are very conscious of the amount of dynamic allocations. What I mean by that is new and delete calls. And when we use a dictionary, it has to do several new and delete calls underneath, which is fine. I mean, that's a nice computer science way of thinking of things. But, but new and deletes, that can fragment your heap and cause all sorts of other issues I don't really want to get into in this video. So for now, I want to get away from the dynamic allocation and stick with what I feel comfortable with. And this may be something I have to profile myself to prove to myself. But some very experienced game programmers were that uh, worked for... Disney, they they told me that they they raised me in this way that 
hey, it's expensive. Dynamic allocation is expensive. And yes, I've seen it. I've experienced it. Not at the level they have, but uh, I definitely am not up for new and delete. Uh, only in in uh, absolutely necessary cases. So what's another way we could do this? Well, maybe you thought of something different than, than what I just suggested. Let me show you how I'm going to do this. I, I'm going to make a little nested private struct, and I'm going to call it a profile category. And in here, I am... Uh, basically, what I'm doing with this profile category is that this is a profile category. We could have several frames that could go on for a long time, but this is one category, and I just want to keep track of these categories, like so. All right, so what's the first thing we need? Well, we need a const char star uh, name. Okay, that's this string up here at the beginning. And then uh, we're going to store, I know I've, I have ints here, but really we're, we're tracking portions of a second so that's going to be a float. So float, and how many floats do we want? I'll call them samples. And then again, avoiding the dynamic allocations here as much as possible. Uh, I'm going to call it samples. Let's just max it out at 50. But you know what? It hurts me to type a magic number there. So let's go here. Const, const, unsigned, int, uh, let's call it max frame samples and we'll set that we'll just start with 50 all right and uh go on like so and you're probably thinking jamie uh it's not going to take very many i mean that's not even a second and a half of time our, our profiler will will max out well yeah we'll get to that <laughs> we'll get to that eventually you know what just to be safe let's give ourselves some extra time i'll say 500 okay and then right here I'm going to call this categories. Now, how many categories are we going to allow? Well, right now we have three. All right, there's one, two, three, three categories. How many categories do we want to allow? I, uh, whatever we want to allow. Const unsigned, int, max, profile, categories. It's we'll just max it out for 20 at 20 for now. And this, so, so defining this array here with this syntax instead of saying uh, float star samples and then later allocating it with a new float All right. Um, the way I'm writing this syntax like here if you remember this is a C++ feature C++ array and what will happen is the memory will all the memory since I'm doing it here statically and when I say statically I'm talking about compile time the compiler knows at compile time what this value is it can see it right here it's constant it's integral meaning it's counting it's not numer uh, floating point like 1.2 or 1.8 the compiler knows this value so the compiler inside of the executable will allocate enough space to to store all these samples. And then again, within uh, these samples will be nested inside of these objects here. And I'm going to max that out at this, like so. Okay, so the compiler, I guess I gotta clarify this. Since this is a member of a class, when I instantiate the profiler, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that later, I'm actually going to do it statically as a static data member, pretty much a global that anyone can access from anywhere. And we'll see that in a future video. But basically the compiler will say, hey, when you load this program up, Windows, uh, in the executable, in the, in the process space, the running process space, make enough room for all of this. All right, now the advantage to that is we allocate up front. It's contiguous. We've got it. It's ours. I don't have to call new. I don't have to call delete. I don't fragment my heap. I have it all nice and coherent, ready for cache, and we'll talk about cache coherency later. Uh, but that's actually very critical is cache coherency. This is much more cache coherent. Now, what's the disadvantage? Well, it's static. And what I mean by static is it's all determined at compile time. When I say I am only going to have 500 of these, that's all I get is 500. Now, if I use up all 500, I'm out of space. If I use up less than 500, I've wasted space. So that's a disadvantage. Um, so there's some pros and cons. And, and this is a profiler. It's a debug tool. Uh, we can obviously tune and refine these numbers to not waste as much space. But, but we're going to have some wasted space, and that's, that's where I'm going to go with this. And also, it's probably a poor attitude of mine, but I've got 
plenty of room on my laptop, maybe not on yours, that's something to think about, but I don't think that, uh, as far as me debugging and running this, having the profiler go, uh, is going to take up too much memory, but that might be a poor attitude on my part, who knows, I'm pontificating. Alright, so there's all the categories, uh, what else do we need to do? We have max profile categories. Notice the syntax I'm using here. If you've ever wondered why we put semicolons at the end of classes or structs, this is why, because, and, and this is historical, but when we have structs with this kind of stuff, structs or classes, either one, uh, the C++ language, by definition, is looking for a variable name of that type that we just defined. Well, we don't have to declare a variable. We can just say semicolon. But we can declare a variable, and the compiler will look for it, and it does in this case. And so I'm declaring a variable, and, and not only am I declaring a variable of this type, I'm creating an array of that type as well. And then here is the semicolon. So whenever you put the semicolon at the end of a class or struct, you may just remember it's optional to define a data member. Okay, I think my voice is frying out because of those soccer games, and I don't have any water. I've drank all my water. Uh, let's see. So when we add an entry, we want to add, oh, first of all, we want to make sure the category exists, which we'll store right here. And then we want to store the time, which will be one of these samples. And we'll get into that. I, the video is getting long, so we're going to work on that in the next video.